Ever wonder how different America is from, say, China? Well, buckle up, folks, because in today's cartoon story joke, we're taking a hilarious trip across the Pacific with a very confused Chinese tourist. Hold on to your chopsticks and buckle up your cowboy boots, folks. We're about to dive into a hilarious clash of cultures, a comical yin and yang of two great nations. It'll be like a fortune cookie with a side of apple pie, or a kung fu panda doing the macarena. Get ready to chuckle your way through this international showdown. Picture Uncle Sam's grumpy old uncle, Phil, in the USA. Perched on the flagpole like a feathered judge, he squints at the tourists below. Tourists? More like crumb droppers, he mutters, glaring at a rogue pigeon making off with his breakfast bagel. Bald is beautiful, but it don't fill the belly. While in China, across the Pacific, Ping the Panda flops back in his bamboo forest armchair, leaves sticking out of his mouth like overgrown broccoli. Ugh, another day, another ton of bamboo, he groans dramatically to his pal Lee. Lee, my dude, is there, like, anything else to eat in this country? Lee, another panda with a permanent case of the munchies, just shrugs and stuffs another stalk in his mouth. Nope, just bamboo, glorious, glorious bamboo. Now in the USA, they drink coffee to stay awake if we need to work long hours. In China, just an afternoon nap will be good enough. Yes, it's coffee jitters versus afternoon zzz. In the USA, Marvin the mailman resembled a hummingbird hopped up on Red Bull. By 9 a.m., his third cup of coffee had him jittery enough to juggle mail sacks blindfolded. Gotta deliver the mail before I see squirrels, he shrieked his voice two octaves higher than usual. Meanwhile, in China, May the office worker announced, power nap commencing with the authority of a queen. Her colleagues, veterans of the siesta wars, simply nodded and dimmed the lights. As May began a symphony of gentle snores, a co-worker tiptoed in and tucked a fluffy panda plushie under her chin. Shh, he whispered, don't wake the productivity panda. In the USA, a businessman named Brad, with a handshake so firm it could crack walnuts, approached his Chinese counterpart. Brad Smith, a pleasure to do business, he boomed. While in China, Mr. Li, a man whose handshake resembled a gentle wave, blinked in surprise. Greetings, Mr. Smith, but have you considered breakfast? A man cannot negotiate on an empty stomach, you know. Brad, confused, stammered. Uh, bagel? And some worries about the future of mankind? Mr. Lee's eyes widened. The future of mankind? Sounds heavy. Perhaps some dim sum will lighten your spirits. In the land of hot dogs and home runs, Larry the baseball player resembled a sleepwalker in cleats. Huh? What inning is it? He mumbled as the umpire yelled, strike three. Across the Pacific, in the land of dumplings and lightning reflexes, Wei the ping-pong player was a blur of ferocious grunts and backhand smashes. His victory dance involved more flips than a celebratory pancake and enough noise to wake the Great Wall of China. In the USA, Brenda the Ice Queen chugged a gallon of ice water like she was auditioning for a polar bear documentary. Brain freeze for peak performance, she declared sending confused shivers down the spines of nearby sunbathers. Meanwhile in China, Mr. Wang cradled his thermos of steaming hot water like a precious dragon egg. Ah, he sighed, cures what ails you, except maybe the chills from watching American baseball players move that slow. In the USA, our family purr is a dog, but in China, a fish is more the norm. Imagine Chester the Chihuahua strutted down the sidewalk in a sequined dog sweater, shivering dramatically. This leash is a disgrace to canine fashion, he declared, glaring at his owner. Meanwhile, Mr. Chen proudly showed off his prize-winning goldfish in a tank adorned with miniature castles and plastic mermaids. Isn't he magnificent? He beamed, the envy of the entire neighborhood. Now that we've explored these cultural quirks like tourists peeking into a piñata full of surprises, let's dive into a joke that perfectly captures the hilarious clash. 
Get ready to snort out your bubble tea or choke on your donut, because here it comes. Meet Wei. First time in the land of the free and the home of, well, Wei wasn't quite sure yet. He hailed a cab, ready to explore, and bam, first culture clash. Whoa, those buses are noisy and so slow. Back home, they're zipping around like bullet trains. Tony, the taxi driver, a man who'd seen enough tourists to fill the Statue of Liberty with selfie sticks, just shrugged. This new guy, Wei, was practically a walking comparison app. Those pigeons? Practically trained ninjas compared to the ones back home. So, when Wei spotted a couple of lumbering Navy ships in the distance, Tony braced himself. Sure enough, Wei leaned forward, eyes wide. Wow, those boats are slow. Back in China, our noodles move faster. Tony choked back a laugh, picturing a blur of ramen racing across the Pacific. This tourist was a gold mine. Seriously? Even the boats here are slow. China's got speed demons on the water. Wei, a tourist with the narration skills of a broken karaoke machine, finally reached his hotel. One look at the taxi meter, and his jaw hit the floor faster than a dropped dumpling. The close-up on the meter revealed a price tag more suited to a spaceship ride. Narrator, dry as a fortune cookie with a bad review. Looks like Wei's gonna need some serious noodle negotiation skills for this one. You got to be kidding me! Those buses are snails. The boats are sloth mobiles. So how come your meter runs faster than a Beijing bullet train? Tony leans back in his seat, finally cracks a smile. My friend, it's made in China. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.